hi guys welcome to another video it's ndagiri here thanks for coming as always for the subscribers thank you so much for your time i really really appreciate it thank you so much today's video is something that i would want to you know talk about a little bit and i send love really to our brothers and sisters living in the usa like you guys are really going through a lot and i wish people could sympathize people will try to understand the situations that you're going through but yeah watch the scripts come back and let's talk about it blacks will be pretty much a permanent underclass in america by the year 2015. why the year 2015? 2015 because what i what i've concluded from analysis is that there are going to be a converging of, of social factors nationally and internationally that's going to place blacks in a permanent status of underclass ship and one we, we anticipate by that point in time, based on all the research that's coming to us, that the next generation of whites can be more anti-black than they've been since the civil rights movement. Two, we anticipate by the same token, about 86 million Hispanics coming into the United States and about 41 million Asians by that point in time, mm -hmm. which is gonna kick black folk out of being the majority minority in the society, mm -hmm. uh, down to a minority minority. We've been number two in the society for 400 years as a group. We're gonna become number four. And, uh, and if we have not gotten anything after being number two for 400 years, you guess what's gonna happen when we become number four? Because at that point in time, all the new groups coming into America, they're coming in higher than we are because this country operates off of a preferential acceptance program, mm -hmm. which means that groups are coming in based on skin color, they're going from the lightest down to the darkest, light, yellow, brown, black. And that's what our immigration laws are based on. And black folk would not be able to penetrate through those groups to get to the white society uh, when that happens because those groups owe us nothing. They don't understand our problems and they are competitive with us and we don't begin to be a little more aggressive about being in a competitive posture, they're gonna eat our lunch. Come to us, now you wanna overly compensate right. for people who never lived here before yeah, we and they yeah. really need to be right. taken yeah. care of first and foremost before anything else happens right. here. Right. Yeah. Why would any leader put our black communities already riddled with crime at further risk by placing unbetted non-taxpayers steps away from our, our seniors, our children, and our homes we've worked so hard on our own to secure? We are at war, people. Our communities are at war. They are violating our communities. And we asking that we have, we across the country, we asking and we're demanding for office of black America, whatever you want to call it, to deal with issues like this. Uh, I did get placed on a wait list, but I was told that the immigrants were taking priority. See, that's a story that a lot of people don't know. And it just, it hurt me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I understand we need to be humanitarian, but these people are that my participant our third and fourth generation Chicagoan, born, bred, fed, and raised here. My grandmother, Mayrella Carrington, rest in peace, always said, Craig, charity starts at home first, and then it go abroad. Politically, having over 500 people in our community would completely wipe out any interest we have. Many of these migrants have been dumped in our neighborhoods without a plan in place to monitor and house them long term. We're going to bring the immigrants in turn them into citizens, give them the right to vote. Thereby, we reduce our dependency on the black vote on election day. They are literally giving these migrants black people's resources from food stamps to housing, to jobs, to clothing, you name it. Taxpayers are not getting what they pay for, but folks who never paid tax a day in their life, nor whose ancestors built this country, are being completely ignored. It's the takeover. To bring some of them brown people from across that border and let me pay them pennies on a dollar under the table. And the reason they love the brown people instead of the black people is because we are an obligation to America. We built it. We built it. So we're an obligation. We're the nuisance that they don't want. But when brown people show up, their ancestors didn't build this country. They come into a place better than the place that they're leaving. They will keep their mouth shut. They will not agitate. They will never become a political problem because they feel it is a blessing just to be here. People would ask, why are you as an African speaking about this matter? It doesn't concern you, but let's face it. America is the center of the world. It's the business center, I would say, for the world, where everybody else comes to take and take and take, because it's a business, you know. And this is why I tell my brothers and sisters, the black people living in America, that America doesn't want you. 
Because if it's able to now open borders and be like, you know what, we should let these people come in. And I think we should give them more grace than the actual people that we have in the country. It lets you know that they don't respect you in any way and the laws are not going to help you in any way. And I feel bad that the immigrants that are coming in are from Africa, from Asia, from, you know, from the Caribbean. These are brown people. These are African people that are also coming in. So when you have people who are desperate, when they come into America, I kid you not, whatever rules that are going to be happening in those places, they are going to be quiet. African people are going to be quiet. Caribbean people are going to be quiet. Asian people are going to be quiet. Why? Because if they say anything, they are going to be deported back. To their countries which is not going to happen to the black american people so when it will ever come to a point where immigrants will have to vote and have that power in their hands to vote for whoever is going to be sitting in any position they will not vote for things that are going to be for the black community and then the vote of the black people will then be decreased like how dr omar said when a lot of immigrants come in the black vote is now going to be reduced because it's no longer going to be that important because there's going to be a lot of other black people in the country and it's sad because this is a country that you guys have fought for this is a country that our ancestors from the continent your ancestors fought for they built but then the system is like putting us against each other because yes let's face it asians are still brown people uh, africans are black people so when they come and they're not going to be you know understanding your struggles or getting to know what you guys built it's going to make us fight ourselves and hate ourselves and these other groups of people that put the systems in place will just sit back relax and be like you know what it's working out. They are fighting each other. They are not going to connect in any way. So I really feel bad that this is the situation that our sisters and brothers have to go through that now they even have to fight their own people that are coming in from other parts of the world. And it's more disheartening that even the people when they come in from let's say Africa or the Caribbean or Asian places, they still act like they are better than the actual black people that have been in those lands, the people that fought for those lands. Like I say these things, I don't have the rights to speak on this issue, but I do because my people are involved. A lot of African immigrants are coming in America every single day. And this is why I am also strong on letting African Americans know when immigrants come in, they come to take from you. You can do the same thing by coming into Africa, coming into other parts of the world. You have to do the same thing and look outside America. The reason why also America is able to control you is because you feel like you got this thing that you built and you can't let go, but everybody else comes and takes and you get nothing. You have a lot of privilege with a blue passport. It's what everybody else wants to have. Like, you see how Africans would do anything to come to America? They would do anything to get that passport because it lets you go to many places on this planet. You also have the American dollar. It's the biggest currency in the world. I know how it feels like to have people coming in your country, immigrants or refugees, and they are given more opportunities. They see more opportunities than you. You feel stuck because I also come from a country where we have a lot of refugees. Uganda has the largest number of refugees, I would say, in Africa. So I do understand that when you see these people coming in your country and the government supports them, you know, the government does everything to help them and, you know, do things that better their lives than you is actually born in the country. So it's really frustrating. Also, I think why immigrants are given grace when they come to America is because there are things they are going to do that a black American person cannot do. They are going to be orders, they are going to be restrictions, they are going to be laws that are going to be affecting them, but they will not speak up because they know it's a price they got. America is a dream they got. And, and they would not want to lose that, which is not going to be the case for, let's say, a black American who is born there. You know your rights. You, you know how to speak up. You know how to be treated. The things they are going to do to any migrant are things that you're not going to accept as an African American. And they know that. So for them to cut that strength and that power away from you, they have to treasure these people that are coming in from other countries. And so it's frustrating that we are now put against each other indirectly and people feel like you are the ones that are a problem and not see that it's the system that is making you want to even be more hard on it 
for you to be able to enjoy the fruits of your ancestors. And also as a black community, we don't have like good strong leaders that are doing better things for us as a people. Uh, we had Obama, for example, he had two terms of ruling. But as black people in America, let's be real, let's be honest. What do you look at and be like, you know what? We had this black man in power for two terms. This is what he set up for us. This is what he did to help us as a community. Do you have any? Maybe you do. I just don't know. You could let me know in the comments. I would like to learn about that. And I would understand. But for me also as an African, I see him as a person who was in power for two terms. And by the time he left, he had also taken the one person we had in the African continent, the late Gaddafi, who was trying to connect Africa to be one and connected in terms of finance, in terms of trade, in terms of everything. This was this person that was trying to connect Africa's one. But guess who took him out? Obama. And also, we should not always vote for people just because they are a dominantly black-owned kind of party, I would say. Like, I, I feel like a lot of us go in a wagon that, oh, black people like this one, we need to vote for that one. Oh, our people are on this side of this side, we need to be there. You need to vote for someone that you see potential in. At this point in time, we've seen that even when we have black leaders in power, they do nothing for us as a people. In fact, they are the ones that are representing a bad picture for everybody else to see us as traitors. Because that's what people see. That's what people see. But I hope we find solutions and see on how to navigate through them. Yeah, really, that's it for me in the video. Let me know what you think about this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.